getting kind of dark out, but uh, I wanted to get a before shot of my, this is my grandpa's 1965 country sedan station wagon. Already looks better. It had some really, well it had some flat tires on the four same size tires and wheels that'll fit it with the white stripes. I'll clean those up. I'm getting ready to power wash the car. Getting my suds bucket ready. Got the bottle of degrease in there. And uh, just going to clean these up real good. Put some matching hub caps on them. As you can see I got my work cut out for me under the hood. This thing's been sitting, uh, last registered, I believe, in 1985. My grandpa passed in 1989. And uh, what's kind of cool about it, it's got the 390 V8 in it. Um, these doors, after sitting so long for some reason, just don't want to open. Um, so I'll deal with that. It's got an electric back window. This car's in actually really straight. Uh, never really got wrecked. It's got a little hickey up here from a parking lot incident but no major rust issues or anything like that back bumpers bent those can be straightened and re-chromed it's got moss growing <laughs> on it and uh, there's a little rust right here but you can see it's real straight definitely been sitting a long time though it's got moss growing everywhere the interior um, actually not too bad. I mean it's old, but it's not all torn up. I rode around in this when I was a little kid. Everything's there. It's missing like one door handle in the back. All the rest of it's there. All the glass is good. Uh, all the chrome trim's there. But it's just really, it needs some cleaning really bad. So, I um, got my pressure washer out. I'm going to go ahead and blast it into this thing. This car I don't know, I kind of held on to it for some sentimental reasons, but I think I'd be doing it a big service just by cleaning it up and getting it running good and selling it so I could build like Corvettes and Chevelles and 55 GMC pickups, stuff like that. I just don't see me ever really needing this. So. I'll be back when I get her all cleaned up and running. So it actually looks better just with that bent bumper off of it. But I have to do something about these uh, bottoms of these doors where it's rusted out. Because that when you put the bumper on there, that really looks horrible. And this corner right here is bent where it got tagged in the butt one time. So I'm going to pull that tail light out there and see how much of that I can put back into place. And then this door is not worth um, repairing that rust on. It needs a do new door shell. And I'm not trying to put a whole bunch of money into this car. So what I'm gonna do is find something to put all the way across from here over to here that covers all this and cut out notches for the hinges and slice it right here and same thing on the other side. I think that'll make it look a lot better. And don't be shocked if a piece of diamond plate winds up there. I'll be back. Uh, it's Rick. I'm back here with my grandpa's 1965 Ford Country sedan station wagon. Worked on it yesterday. Uh, this quarter panel was kind of caved in in the back here. Got my little uh, dollies and hammers out. Straighten that out pretty good, a lot better than it was. Put a new back bumper on it. Not a new back bumper, a uh, used bumper that I picked up in the junkyard for 75 bucks. Had a couple dings in it that I uh, pounded out the best I could. And then I had some huge rust holes back here at the bottoms of the tailgate. And it needs a new tailgate, but it looked like heck, so I went ahead and cut out these pieces of diamond plate there and uh, actually bent it, put a lip on it so it wraps around with the contour of the tailgate and I think that looks a heck of a lot better than it did. I also put some reinforcements on the inside of the tailgate. Um, got all the, all the door handles and latches and everything working. Got all the electrical work and all the lights work. I even got the license plate light working. 
Um, but there's a switch right here that you just put down and the back window comes down. Only way you can get the tailgate open. So I had to fix that before I could even get the tailgate open. Took a lot of garbage and debris out of this car. But as you can see, everything's working like it's supposed to be. Got this all cleaned out. I got some more cleaning up to do on it. But I really like this storage area in this car. And this compartment back here actually locks. Got a lock right there. It's kind of cool. You can definitely put a lot of stuff in the back of this. And if you want to put people in it, and you just ex actually the back seat's in really nice shape. <clears throat> yeah, still going to do some more cleaning on that, but then you still got room for a ton of stuff. So it's coming along, and I've got the cover for that too. But yeah, I think that looks a lot better than it did. back end just looked horrible on this car so much better uh, then I think as far as this car goes I'm just gonna do a little sanding and priming on some of the surface rust and then it's time to say bye-bye to grandpa's wagon a lot of these cars got taken apart uh, bought and stripped down because people wanted those Z code 390s for their uh, Mustang projects or, or whatever kind of project, Ford projects they were working on. And a lot of these got sacrificed. But this one's got its numbers matching, complete drivetrain, I mean everything, distributor, carburetor, all of it is factory original. And it does have some power. Runs real sweet. Doesn't have any smoking issues. Things have got tons of cargo room. So the, the back seat flips down, and back here you've got another compartment that's got tons of storage in it. Got the spare and everything all there. And then if you come over here. There's a little hand. Look at how nice that back seat is. 50 years old. <laughs> awesome. Little handle right here. You just flip. Pull this down. And uh, the whole back area converts into like the, the hold on the Queen Mary. And then figure you got this down below too. Uh, you can haul a lot of stuff in this car. Good parts about this car. Quarter panels. Just a little tiny bit of rust beginning behind the rear wheel wells, but look at just miles and miles of straight solid sheet metal. The rocker panels are extremely solid. Look at all the door jams and everything. No rust, just solid. The carpet's a little messed up. It is 50 years old, like I said. But see, that's just dirt right there, no rust. Solid. Here's where the carpet's wore through. Let me get a light on that for you. No holes. Those, those floors are solid, completely solid. All the dash stuff's here. It's pretty cool looking, actually. It's kind of a trip to drive down the road. This car doesn't handle like today's cars. 
Um, the only things that don't work on this car are the radio, but I think it's just the speaker because when you turn it on, it lights up and it makes noises. Can you hear that? I think it's the speaker. So, so the radio doesn't work and the dome light doesn't work. Other than that, even the headliner is in pretty good shape on this car. The car's kind of a time capsule. So uh, in order to get it running, I did pull the gas tank, um, cleaned it all out, used pour 15 on it. So that's good to go. The fuel, the whole fuel system's been cleaned out. As I said, this car has the uh, factory Z code, 300 horsepower, 390 V8, and a Cruzomatic transmission. Runs and drives, stops, everything works good. Power steering works good. There's a shot. Maybe you can see the Z. Yep, right here. Z. That, that's the 300 horsepower, 390, four barrel, dual exhaust, V8. Good. Got all the matching I've got got the luggage rack up there all the glass on this car is perfect I'm not saying it's good or usable I'm saying it's perfect there's no chips in the windshield no scratches everything's perfectly clear it's wet right now because it's raining but this glass is all in really good condition on this thing I'm gonna go ahead and put the tailgate back up seat back up. I'm putting the seat up. All you do is lift up this little guy right here. Locks into place. Very nice. When I first started working on this car, the only door that opened on it was the driver's side door. I've got all that. Took the panels off. Got all the hardware inside the doors lubed up, all the windows rolled down up, door locks work, all that stuff. And it just sounds cooler than heck when you fire it up. Starts right up. Shot at that rear window in action. It's kind of slow, but it's old. You know, things, things get slower when they get old. Just imagine loading about uh, 50 of your friends up in this thing and uh, hitting the highway. In fact, let's hit the highway. Gotta grab my little tripod. This car's kind of weird to drive, like I was saying. Uh, we get used to our new cars, and the defroster does work, by the way. We get used to our new cars with all their fancy suspensions and analog brakes and all that. So if you haven't driven a 50 year old car, you might want to go drive one before you go buy one. Um, but it's kind of fun. I like it. This thing does have some power. And grandpa didn't beat on it. My grandpa, he, he very rarely drove this thing actually. Because he had a Volkswagen he liked a lot better. Let's go. But we're not going to go too far. Anyway, it's like going for a test drive, but you don't have to drive. <laughs> this thing is just fun. You do want to uh, make sure you have plenty of room to turn around. Because <laughs> it's a big one. And I've got a temporary 
permit on it, so it's legal to drive if somebody wants to come drive. And if you live far away, I wouldn't worry about it. Fly and drive home, totally, trust me. This car's in great shape. Probably needs a carburetor rebuilt, um, I would think, after sitting as long as it did. But, uh, like I said, she scoots pretty good. My fault, I started out low gear there. Tranny does shift good. See? Nice kick down. <laughs> you almost feel like you're you're doing something wrong driving this thing. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It would be quieter if someone were to run uh factory exhaust on it. I've got new mufflers on it. I also put brand new air shocks on the back because no one likes a sagging wagon. A sagging wagon is not cool. So what I do is I put air shocks on there so I could just uh, jack it up a little bit past level. So it looks like it's proud to be here because it is, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I'd get in trouble if I kept this. <laughs> Anyway, so that's Grandpa's uh, 65 Ford Galaxy Wagon. I could get to liking this car. Huh. Runs real good. So that's basically the most accurate description you're going to get of a vehicle. This thing is just, it's never been in a serious accident. Not that I know of. And I've been associated with this guy. I rode in the, the there used to be jump seats in the back. I'm going to call my brother and see if he's got them in an attic or something. But uh, I rode in the jump seats on this car on a ferry going to Victoria, B.C. And uh, I've got some funny stories about this car too. I think it's pretty cool looking myself. I'm just not a wagon guy. But the thing is, like I said, most of these got smashed. You know, 70s, 80s, even the 90s, people were saying, oh, big old wagon, it weighs 5,000 pounds, it's not a muscle car. Let's smash it and get a bunch of money. And although they made a whole ton of these things, there just aren't very many left. Um, and this one has the added bonus of that 300 horsepower Z code 390 V8 and the Cruzomatic and the heavy duty rear end. So, uh, w another thing that happened to a lot of these wagons is people bought them for the drivetrain and stuffed them under Mustangs because they had an instant S code 390 Mustang when they did that with all the date correct parts on it. Um, I would hate to see this that happen to this wagon. I'd like to see it go to somebody who needs a wagon to haul people around or their stuff around and uh, want something that's cool and different. There's your canvas. So this is Rick and this is the ending of the video for Grandpa's Wagon. I've done my part. Now it's up to you. Peace out.